so we are on our way to New Orleans. Uh, I don't quite remember what I was supposed to be doing there, but Terrence Southern asked me to come out to, to do this show. I don't know what it is exactly. I heard I need pajamas, but New Orleans is a place I've been wanting to go for the longest time. Uh, specifically because I love Cajun food. Now you guys know I make a mean ass gumbo, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing compared to the stuff out there. So I'm trying to see alligators, crocodiles, gumbos, and titties. Stepping out of the airport, kind of find out how humid this place is. And that's the interesting thing, because you're in an air-conditioned area, and the moment you walk out, it's like, bam, hot Indian diaper. I don't know how I'm gonna handle that, because I, I tend to get heat rashes in humid weather, and if you don't know what a heat rash is, it's basically a fucking diaper rash all over your body. What the fuck? Oh, yes. I thought I didn't have a soul for a second. It's been two minutes. I am moist. I am incredibly moist. I know a lot of you don't even like that word out there, but I'm fucking moist. I'm trying to just pop lock my fucking moisture off. Ta-ta! So this is the hotel, I believe it's called the Mirage. Didn't really check it out, but we are here for the show. I saw a lot of camera equipment out there, but I've been on a plane for about four hours, so you know, we gotta get in that Korean stretch. Now, if you haven't seen this before, it's simple. You start with getting your kneecaps, tap. You start here and then you rotate out. Gonna get those hips. You wanna swing. Mm. Ah! Got my stretch on. This is MTV Crib style. Check it out. We got these underglow lights under the bed. Ball is life. We got these pegs right here so you can hang your shit. Ball is life. Got a TV made by LG. Life's good. And of course, we got this uh, sham well type of fabric for the blanket in case I wet myself. Now, <clears throat> on the way here. Oh my God, I think this is tempur On the way here, it was, it was really fun because uh, we had a we had a conversation with our Uber driver. She was super sweet, kind of uh, very talkative, unlike a lot of people in LA where they kind of tend to uh, <laughs> either talk about what they're doing, how much money they make, and instead she was talking about the city, how much she loves it, and, and you know, like fun, interesting facts about herself, which I really appreciate. But if everybody in New Orleans is like her, then I think I'm gonna have a good time. Oh, and they gave us free drinks when we came here too. The guy was super nice. Everybody in New Orleans used to be super nice. I hope it's not just like this small area here, but hospitable. So this is like the dinner portion of what we're about to do. I don't know what this restaurant is known for. I don't know if it's good. I just know that's gonna be, oh, and there's a menu right there, Bing Bang Bao. <laughs> She's about Bing Bao business. It seems a little fancy. It's a little bit more upscale. I think this is gonna be like that like Cajun food that has a little bit of a, of a chef twist to it. Um, as you can see, the menu has no pictures. So that's fancy. I don't know if I'm gonna get my New Orleans experience here, but you know, it's a good way to start off the meal. We have a whole night ahead of us, a couple of drinks, some more food. It's about to get crazy. Singing me love, 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 love. I already know what I want. Yeah? Do you even look at it? Like no, I was talking to the hostess up there, so she gave me all the recommendations. Uh, she, I mean, she suggested the uh, the jerk cornelli with crispy chicken because they just put it on the menu because it was popular. 
and then uh, she said for sure the cold smoked tuna tartare. All right. And then either the duo of beef, the curry goat, which which you mentioned, yeah. And the the pica pasta. I like that you like talk to people before you even get to the table. So that's I, like, I have to. What am I going to eat? <laughs> One of the things I hate the most is like going to dinner and you, you know when you kind of expect a great meal and you have to pay for it? If it tastes bad, it's like it ruins my whole night. I hate it. These are buttermilk biscuits. He did this whole spiel about it. There's something about bacon in there too. I think it's buttermilk biscuits with bacon and chive, from what I remember. I'm a huge biscuit fan. One of my favorite biscuits of all time is from Church's Chicken. If y'all know about Church's Chicken, that's that good shit. Ooh, warm. And it was delicious. And I was like, yes, I'm going to finish this whole thing in my room as I'm working. Chives? This is like such an degenerate regard. Ooh. That's good. Dude, it literally tastes like bacon, fat, and butter. It's awesome. This is a breaded deep fried pig ear. What's that? What? Is it like a deep fried pig ear? Yeah, pig ear. <laughs> try it. Yeah. I mean, I'll try anything. I like that. You're not Asian? What the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> pig ear is like very cartilaginous, depending on how it's uh, prepared. So. This because it's deep fried, I don't know what it is, but it kind of just tastes like. Kind of like a hardened piece of like pig fat, but it's breaded in the deep fried. Everything breaded in the deep fried tastes great. This is the uh, deep fried dirty rice arancini balls. Looks like a little testicle. Should be delicious. It's like cheese inside. That's good. Arancini balls are really good. Deep fried, super hot on the inside. This is the croquette. The conch croquette. Conch is like a sea snail. You know that thing that you see when people are lost on the island and they blow into that shit? That's a conch. How do you feel about it? I don't know. I'm about to eat it right now. It's hot. It's good though. Very hot. I don't really taste the conch. But I think when you deep fry anything that with cheese, it's pretty good. When did I first meet you? No, it was a while ago. Was it at the batch uh, video shoot or was it before that? Which batch video shoot? You, it was like when batch just started. It was like before he was really doing Vine. Yeah, for the Blurred Lines video? Or the Remarkable Vagina video? A, <laughs> I don't even yeah, know what that video was. Too many. <laughs> you were singing up on stage. Oh, that might have been. Is that the first time I, I ever... I feel like, you know what it is? I've known of you for so much longer and like watched your content. So I feel like I've known you for longer. Okay, okay. But yeah, that's probably the first time we actually met. Okay. You know when you're like, YouTube friends? And then you think you've been friends for longer, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh shit. So let's talk about what we got here for the first course. We got the cold smoke to the tartar. So when you guys hear something gets cold smoke, it's exactly what it is. You're gonna get that smoky flavor, but you're not gonna get the, the product cooked by uh, a hot smoke. So you're, you, when you think about a hot smoke, you're thinking about stuff like you know, when you cook brisket or you do um, smoked meats and stuff like that. This is done in the cold smoke. So you can see the flesh is still very apparently very tuna, but you get that nice deep flavor from that. The cilantro in there that I didn't see. It actually tastes a lot more Asian than I expected. So there's onions in there. There's an avocado puree. And I think that's caviar on top as well. Probably one of the, the better tuna tartars I've ever had. Cheers. Good? Nice. It tastes very Asian. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Good, right? So good. So good. So I was right from the first tasting. This is a flattened out banana. I was thinking it might be a plantain, but it wasn't. It's a flattened out banana. So usually when you go to these restaurants, you have tuna tartare, they always give you some type of vessel to eat, eat with it, whether it's like a deep fried plantain chip, it could be a taro chip, it could be crackers, saltines, whatever you have it. But they did something a little different. It's like black sesame and a banana. This is a bite of the hamachi coconut curry with pickled mango and trout roe. I love hamachi, by the way, very buttery. Here we go. 
That's good. I wonder if the uh, chef here has like Caribbean influences. Because you taste a lot of like, that is like, yeah, coconut curry, that's very Caribbean. And that's on point. A lot of people out there might be a little daunted when you guys see like fish roll, but just picture fish roll as another type of seasoning. Like, there's like this salty little ocean ball and like when you bite into it, it kind of adds like a salinity to the, to the, to the dish that you're having and it really kind of brings it up another lot. So it's a different way of salting your food basically is what I'm saying. And um, yeah, that was out of the park. I love it. So it's a Wednesday night. I'm at a, I'm at a table full of women. What can I say? I'm not single. So it doesn't mean anything to me. Mariel, I love you. These women, <laughs> they're not even interested in me. I'll tell you right now, if I was single though, everybody at this table would be rejecting me at this moment. Here we have a duo of beef. A duo meaning two types of beef on the plate. This looks like a tenderloin piece. I don't know what that is. It looks like it's braised of some sort. We have peas, carrots, and a carrot puree with a sauce on top of that. So, it looks like a demi glace. But, um, gonna try this out. Perfect medium rare, super tender, seasoned really well. It's a good piece of beef. That's definitely a demi glace sauce on that. It tastes like braised short rib, delicious peas. It's a very simple, straightforward dish. Very beefy. I love it. First time ever having lobster in my whole life. No. <laughs> Makes me lose my appetite. Here, let's, let's, let's switch. You can have this. <laughs> <I'll take> this. <laughs> Ed has a huge fear of seafood, and he thought he was brave enough to go ahead and try this out. Ed almost threw up, so I gave him my duo of beef, and now I'm eating his uh, lobster, lobster pasta. So it has a really good, flavorful tomato sauce. It's very rustic. You can still see the, the pieces of garlic that was sliced in there, it wasn't minced or just dissolved into the sauce. It has a really strong seafood flavor, which I personally love, and doesn't so much. And then on top of that, it has very generous, big chunks of lobster. That's how it's supposed to be. So when you guys go eat Italian food, there's a huge difference in when you get packaged pasta and fresh pasta. Way different. The texture of it is way better. So when you have al dente, freshly made pasta, it kind of has like a very spongy, it still has like that chewy al dente mouthfeel, but it's it's definitely a little more tender. Fresh pasta too, by the way, absorbs a lot more flavor. So whatever sauce that fresh pasta is in is gonna absorb that flavor. So you could taste the lobster, you could taste the, the tomato sauce, and um, has a little bit of a heat to it, which I like too as well. we have the finale, which is gonna be dessert. This is a chocolate cake of some sort with some kind of chocolate soup. It honestly looks like diary and pus, but I don't know, it looks somewhat appetizing. We have these little charcoal briquettes on the side and some dirt. I, this makes me feel weird. It kind of, you know that, that trypophobia thing where you see dots and something, this makes me feel like that. So excuse me as I do that to it. I'm not that big of a dessert guy, but we're gonna give it a go. It's not overly sweet. It's still very decadent, but it's not something that's gonna blast you with a lot of sugar. It's not cloyingly sweet. I, I, I enjoy this a lot. And then you have like the mango over there to kind of just add that little bit of brightness towards the end because you have that really deep chocolate. That's bomb. So we just finished with our meal at Compare La Pain. That's Creole French for you uncultured brutes. <laughs> like I knew that shit before I asked the hostess. The food was amazing. Probably the best thing that I had here definitely had to be the dessert. Um, I'm not that big of a chocolate fan, but uh, if the executive chef or whoever created that dish can take someone like me who doesn't like the main ingredient in a dish and make me walk away with a smile, then I think that chef did a great job with that. This place is just the, the, the beginning of my culinary experience here. My culinary journey. That sounds so fucking douchey. It's, it's, it's my experience of me eating some bomb ass food here. There you go, that's more Davis so like. But uh, New Orleans, we're, we're kicking it off right, man. It's about to be popping. How do you 
How do you pronounce the name of the restaurant? Compare La Pond. Compare La Pond. Com compare La Pond? Yeah. Com compare La com Pond. Compare uh -huh. La Pond. Compare La Pond. Okay, thank you.